stars, right? Stars are those shiny objects which we see in the sky during the night time, right? If there is a cloudless night, then we can easily see the stars, right? And solar system comprises of sun, planets, moon, all together, right? So have you ever observed the sky of a cloudless, clear night? So there is a difference in observing the sky from the cities and in observing the sky from the villages. See, villages have less pollution and less number of lights and not too many high buildings as that of the city, right? So that is the reason the sky is clearer and more brightly seen from the villages. And when compared to the cities, cities have very high and tall buildings and on these tall buildings many lights will be there and due to the pollution, due to the smoke and all these things, it all forms a layer over the atmosphere. So the sky will still be visible but not completely clearly as that of compared to that of village. So if we go to sometimes if you accidentally sometimes if you go to a village on any vacation, just try to observe the sky. There will be at the night time. So there will be objects which are shining, which will be sparkling, some objects will be only very giving light but not sparkling and twinkling. So there are many objects and if you have a telescope you can see through that the stars and other things. So there is a difference between the sky what you see from the villages and the sky what you see from the cities. So all these things what you observe in the night time are known as the celestial objects. So any naturally occurring object in the observable universe with what with it? With any naturally occurring object in the observable universe. Observable universe is things which you are which you are able to see with the naked eye, things which are visible to the naked eye. It is known as the celestial body. Any naturally occurring body which is visible to your naked eye is known as in the sky at the night time in the universe is known as the celestial body. So what are the examples of the celestial body? Stars, moon, planets, and comets and satellites. People send satellites to the sky, right, for the purpose of navigation, for money study of the total solar system. So these satellites are also sometimes visible. If you see from the telescope also they may be visible. So all these objects which are visible are known as the celestial objects. So in the celestial objects, first let's learn about the moon. So moon is the only natural satellite of the earth. As soon as the sun sets, we start seeing the moon, right? The moon gives us the light during the night time, right? But this is not the light from the moon. The sunlight reflects back. The sunlight which falls on the moon reflects back. That is the reason we are able to see the moon. So moon is the only natural satellite of the earth. This is the nearest neighbor to the earth. So moon is the nearest neighbor to the earth. And moon is almost 4 lakhs kilometers away from the planet earth. So what do we see on the moon's surface? Is there life on the moon's surface as there is life on the earth? Is there water? Is there air on the earth? Is there food on the moon's surface? So we don't know. Many astronauts go and study the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong was one such astronaut. So what they observed on the moon was there is no atmosphere on the moon. There is no life on the moon. Moon is full of craters. Craters are nothing but small small holes or small small irregular paths on the surface of the moon. So moon is full of craters and also mountains. There are so many mountains on the moon. Some mountains are such high as such height as those of mountains on the earth. Many mountains on the earth are of greater heights, right? The Himalayas. And in other countries also there are many mountains. So how high those mountains are? Same way on the moon also. Such high mountains are there, such tall mountains. So moon doesn't have any atmosphere, there is no life on the moon. So the faces of the moon. So when we see moon in the sky, every day the size is not same, right? On different days, the moon has different sizes. So what do we call these different sizes moon? So shape of the moon changes every day. Everybody knows that. Shape of the moon changes every day. So it is first thing is new moon. On the new moon day, there will be no moon in the sky. So on this day, no moon is observed in the sky. Then there is something called full moon day, where you see moon as a complete big circle. Faces of the moon, we observe that the size of the 
similar every day on different days the moon is of different sizes right whenever we see in the darkness of the sky sometimes it is circle sometimes semi circle some sometimes crescent shape and sometimes it will be no moon so what are the phases of the moon it is new moon new moon day means on this day no moon will be observed right then full moon day full moon day means after after 15 days of this new moon the moon appears as a complete circle complete circle then it is known as full moon day the hindus mostly prefer to some specific pujas some prayers on this full moon day they regard this full moon day as purnima right and they treat it as an auspicious day so that is full moon day moon appears as a complete circle after 15 days of new moon then so there is something called crescent moon so immediately after the no moon day from the next day onwards the moon, moon starts appearing in a thin line shape so that is nothing but crescent shaped moon so after the new moon the next day the portion of the moon appears in the sky known as the crescent moon immediately after the no moon day the moon starts appearing like a thin line which is crescent in shape also known as the waxing crescent and day by day the size gets increased so those crescent shaped moon is known as a crescent moon so you must know that like sun produces its own light moon doesn't produce light but then how can we see that say that the moon is giving light because whatever sunlight whatever sunlight falls on the moon gets reflected to us on the earth that is the reason we see light on the moon whatever sunlight falls on the moon gets reflected on to us that is the reason we see light on the moon now we will see why these phases occur on the moon the reasons for why these phases of the moon occur what is the reason for these changes in the size of the moon reasons for the phases of the moon so now we have understood that moon has mainly three phases full moon new moon and crescent so what are the reasons for these different phases of the moon so moon takes same time in completing one rotation and revolution so the period of rotation and revolution is same in the moon you know now earth rotates revolves around the sun same way moon also rotates and revolves so moon takes the same time in completing one rotation and revolution that means period of rotation and revolution is same for the moon so due to this feature only the surface of the moon is visible from the earth surface of the moon is visible from the earth why only one surface is visible because the period of rotation and revolution in the moon is similar due to this feature only one surface of the moon is visible to us which surface the surface which is lighted by the sunlight understood so since the rotation and revolution period are similar only one surface of the moon is visible to us right when we see we see only the one surface of the moon why because moon doesn't produce its own light moon reflects the sunlight that is the reason moon when sunlight falls on the moon it gets reflected to us that is the reason we are able to see the moon so which surface of the moon is visible to us the sunlight and portion so moon doesn't produce its own light it reflects the sunlight and the sun lit portion of the moon is visible to us that is the reason during this process of rotation are visible to us so if the moon and sun are in the same light and the earth is between them understood when the moon and the sun are in the same light and earth is between them then we can say that it is a full moon day and then if the earth and sun and then if the earth and the sun are in a straight line and moon is between them then it is known as the new moon day on new moon day no moon is in moon on the new moon day no moon will be visible it will be total darkness on the full moon day the moon will be in the form of complete circle so on the full moon day the sun the earth and the moon will be in straight line but in the middle earth will be there whereas in the new moon day the earth and the sun will be in straight line in between the moon will be there this is the reasons for the phases of the moon next is the star so star is also a celestial object right so but it is a very huge celestial object very big in size and it produces heat and light because the temperature over there is very high and it produces many gases also that is the reason it has very high temperature produces heat and light and it is full of very hot gases so temperature is usually hotter there so but sun is the nearest star 
sun is always a star you have to remember sun is not different sun is also a star and sun is the nearest star to us how we are 150 million kilometer from us so is it that very near no right and we cannot even know how many zeros come in that million right so but still then compared to the other stars it is the nearest star and the distance of 150 kilometers 150 million kilometers from us and then we know that alpha century right next nearest star it is about 40 trillion kilometers from us it is a great distance so many zeros come in the 40 almost 10 zeros come in the 40 trillion kilometers so the alpha century star is almost 40 trillion kilometers from the surface of the earth so all these are stars sun is also a star right then all these distances in explaining in kilometers is very difficult right million kilometer trillion kilometer so it's a big big units so they scientists have invented one more unit for measuring these distances that unit is known as light year so interstellar distances that means distances from the star and star distances from the earth and the star so these distances are too big and too big to be expressed in kilometers so a more convenient this unit is known as light year. So light year is the distance of light traveled in one year. In one year, how much distance the light travels is expressed as light year. It is a unit. So the distance of stars are expressed also in light years. So eight minutes is the distance. Is the eight minutes is the time taken for the sunlight to reach the earth. So every day morning around five to six, we have the sunlight coming. Right, sun rises. So 8 minutes is the time the sun takes to reach the surface of the earth. Next 4.3 light years. 4.3 light years is the distance the, is, is the distance that expresses the star named Alpha Century. How much away it is from the earth? This distance of earth from the Alpha Century star is expressed in light year, light year units. How many light years? 4.3 light years. So here we have explained express the distance as 40 trillion kilometers when expressed in light years it is 4.3 light years the distance of earth from alpha century star so next something there is one more unit called astronomical unit au it is also a unit of measurement this unit of measurement is used to express the distance of planets from the sun so we have nine planets right so the distance from the sun to those planets is expressed the unit astronomical unit so the distance of earth and the sun is one astronomical unit the distance of the sun from the earth's surface is one astronomical unit so have you ever wondered why the stars are not visible during the day because sun is also a star and all the stars which we see during the night time are also stars then why is only sun visible during the daytime because the brightness of the stars is because the brightness of the sun is much more than the brightness of the other, sun, other stars. That is the reason we can only see the sun. Same way, this is like the binding effect of headlights of the cars. So in the evening time, after darkness, when we go on the road, if the, dark, if the headlights of the opposite cars are so bright that we will not be able to see anything around except those bright light. So that phenomenon applies here also. The brightness of the sun is so much high but we cannot see any other stars except the sun. So when we are traveling on the road, the opposite car's brightness, like headlight brightness, will be so bright that we cannot see anything around us except that bright light. Same way, we cannot see any other stars because of the brightness of the sun. So that is the reason stars are not visible during the day. 